Tonight, I have a tale of two cities. Well, actually, two countries for you. Germany, Germany, and the United States. One country is preparing for a future in which their children will breathe clean air and lead the world's economy. And the other is preparing for a future in which their children will choke on polluted air and fall behind the rest of the world in the global economy. How so? Germany just announced a $260 billion investment in new energy. That's 8% of their GDP, with the goal of getting 80% of their nation's energy from wind and solar. This is the largest investment in energy that Germany has made since World War II. And they're even making this investment right in the middle of a financial crisis sweeping Europe. Why? Because Germany gets it. No nation in the history of the world has ever cut its way to prosperity. Just look at Greece trying to do it and failing. So Germany knows that the only way to get out of this crisis is to grow their way out of it, to come out in the end of it a better, stronger, and wealthier nation through government investments in the future. Germany is going to build offshore wind farms covering an area six times larger than the, than the size of New York City. They're going to put up thousands and thousands of miles of new power lines to modernize their energy grid, enough new smart grid power lines that if they were stretched out in a single line, would reach from London all the way to Baghdad. And prompted by the Fukushima disaster last year, Germany is shutting down 17 nuclear reactors, supplying about a fifth of all the electricity in their nation and replacing those reactors with the wind farms and solar panels that they're now building. German leaders know this is a big gamble, and the sacrifices will need to be made to make it work, including higher taxes on the wealthy and temporarily higher energy costs for consumers. But they're moving forward with the plan anyway, or perhaps because, because ultimately it's in the best interest of their nation to do so. And most importantly, it's in the best interest of German future generations. So the question we should be asking ourselves right now, here, is what is the United States going to do to prepare for a future with renewable energy? Tragically, not much. Last month, President Obama put forward a budget that included massive increases in renewable energy to make the United States, like Germany, 80% powered by renewables by 2035. That budget, unfortunately, was declared dead on arrival by Republicans in Congress. And today, Republican Budget Chairman Paul Ryan released his budget that includes massive cuts to existing renewable energy programs, calling, saying that President Obama was recklessly spending on uncompetitive alternatives. Right. By uncompetitive alternatives, Ryan's referring to things like wind and solar, which would be cheaper today than nuclear, oil, or coal if the government subsidies for these dangerous and polluting energy sources went away. But Ryan keeps in place the government subsidies for nuclear, oil, and coal. He only wants to get rid of anything that might encourage solar or wind. Ryan said his plan would promote policies aimed at reliable energy. As in, we know oil burns, it's reliable. So let's keep investing in it until there's no more left. Not only that, while Germany will build wind farms that dwarf Manhattan, Republicans in Congress are still hell-bent on extending the Keystone XL pipeline to transport last century's energy source, fossil fuels, across our nation for export out of Texas. And each time progressives and President Obama push for new investments in green energy, they're met with unanimous Republican filibusters in the Senate and outright rejection in the Tea Party-controlled, oil-soaked House of Representatives. Calls to invest, invest, invest are met with calls to drill, baby, drill. And when it's pointed out that these investments are crucial to the prosperities of future generations, conservatives simply say, oh, we can't afford to make a better world for our kids. Screw them. So how the hell can Germany, which is footing the bill to bail out the rest of Europe, afford it? The answer is because everyone is working together in Germany. As Peter Terriam, the CEO of Germany's second largest private energy company, RWE, said, the German energy transformation is as challenging as the first moon landing. It's a huge challenge we'll be able to master only if everyone works together. That's coming from one of Germany's biggest coal and oil barons. We can only imagine what our nation would be capable of if our coal and oil barons at Massey and ExxonMobil and Chevron were to put aside their thirst for more instant profits 
cut back on their lobbying for more and more subsidies and actually work with all of us to invest in the future of America? Since when did our national pride, our desire to leave a better planet for our nation to our, and, and nation, excuse me, to our kids, get replaced by the singular goal of maximizing profits for today's CEOs? The really sad part of this is we had the jump on Germany more than 30 years ago when President Jimmy Carter put solar panels on the White House and introduced a comprehensive energy plan to get America off its addiction to foreign oil and on to renewable energies. Here's what he told the nation in 1978. We simply must balance our demand for energy with our rapidly shrinking resources. By acting now, we can control our future instead of letting the future control us. You've always been proud of our leadership in the world. And now we have a chance, again, to give the world a positive example. We've always been proud of our vision of the future. We've always wanted to give our children and our grandchildren a world richer in possibilities than we have had ourselves. They are the ones that we must provide for now. They are the ones who will suffer most if we don't act. In that same speech, President Carter said that he was passing legislation, and he did, by the way, that would make sure that America would never import more oil than we had in 1977. And that by the year 2000, he was putting into place legislation to create a national solar bank so that by the year 2000, 20% of all the electricity in the United States would be created by solar power. And it would have. But two years later, Ronald Reagan moved into the White House, took the solar panels off the roof of the White House, scrapped Carter's energy plan. We haven't had a national energy policy since then. Reagan committed our nation to sucking on oil for the next three decades. And for 30 years, Republicans in Congress have killed any attempt by Democrats to put forward plans for a clean energy future. And so today we stand here, still choking on pollution, still drilling for more oil, still fouling the Gulf Coast, and falling behind nations like Germany, Denmark, and China when it comes to new energy investments. Human history tells a story of empires collapsing when they fail to prepare for a new energy revolution, from wood to coal to oil to now renewables. And without a truly revolutionary investment in new energies, the United States will suffer the same fate in the coming years.